All right, it's going to be a short video, and uh, I don't even think it's going to have an intro, but um, I'll give you a little intro. My name is Chris. I run this YouTube channel, Variable Trading, and in this video, there will not be a camera. It's just going to be a short video where I discuss a few things about today and my overall process of trading. I'm not going to describe to you my trading strategy, but I will cover a few things that are related to my overall process that have the potential to greatly make or break you as a trader or they have the potential to make or break me as a trader based on my criteria and my overall process of doing business so i'm going to talk mainly about discipline in this video so let's get right to it i'm just sitting here in my chair it's a little late in the evening here 10 p.m and i just wanted to make this recording and this is the type of video that i would normally have on unlisted on youtube but i might put this one public just because why not so today was monday and that would be january 24th 2022 and um, overall stocks were selling off and bonds were overall bullish sideways bullish um i I had a weird sort of trading session. Actually, my trading session ended very early as I had three trades or I had four trades. One of them was a break even. That would have been the second trade. And the other three, I was stopped out for two ticks a piece. So I lost six ticks in total. And um, also, guys, if you hear some sound in the background, that's my mom who's cleaning coffee cups in the kitchen, but it's not a big deal. So, so just you'll have to deal with it for this video. So the thing is, is that uh, we had three losing trades and this is very rare and I could actually go ahead and look at my trade activity log right now, but I know already off of the back of my head here, I could look at say, I don't know, 60, 70 trades. The amount of times that I'm stopped out fully for a two tick loss without the market even going one tick in my favor is like probably... 0 0.5 out of 10 times it's like very rare that this happens okay and what happened today was that the first trade of the day was offside right away and got stopped out almost immediately within about three four seconds five seconds maybe um, which is very rare so i definitely categorize that trade as an outlier trade uh, the second trade of the day was um hesitating on my entry so i exited for a break even and um, i say i had pretty good discipline uh, to exit this trade um also that trade in particular was coming close to the news event which was uh, 9 45 in the morning and i'll fast forward the video until that point um you can see here i was long at 21 i actually decided to cut this trade when i started to see the market really hesitating on the entry here the 20 and 75 bid ended up holding in the long run but we were going right into a news number at 9 45 and i really did not know what to expect from this so i decided to catch a break even when i had the chance so as soon as i saw the bid kind of hesitating there i kind of got out and then the bid sort of pumped up a little and then it traded at 20 75 another time afterwards and then about three minutes after this Thing pumped up to 22 which would have been where my target was uh, but that's all right uh, it's always tricky kind of going into announcements of data and whatnot so you know i find this was a perfectly fine trade um the first trade of the day well we'll look at it uh, we don't have to look at it, it doesn't matter uh, i already know what it was but anyways it was offside right away and uh, stopped out for my two tick loss then um, I had one trade not long after the news announcement, and I would say this trade right here was actually a mistake. It was an impulsive trade completely, and um, right here, it was a short at 22 and a quarter, and um, I had reasons for looking to sell at this area, but overall, I realized that this was a sort of impulsive decision, and we're going to kind of, I'm going to talk to you about a few things here um, now, so this morning now, I'm going to describe to you the context around this morning, okay? So I did not feel very energized this morning at all. And um, I was, in fact, very tired. I was totally like, I felt like a zombie. You know when you feel like your brain is like half awake, half asleep? Well, that's what I felt like this morning. And um, I recently learned, <laughs> believe it or not, I didn't know this, but um, hitting the snooze button is the worst thing you can possibly do if you plan on waking up energized in the morning. And um, what did I do yesterday? I hit the snooze button and I stayed in bed maybe about 
20, 30 minutes longer than I should have. Um, and I hit the snooze button. So I screwed up. And I definitely felt very, very, very tired. Totally out of it. To the point where I was looking at my screen and I didn't really know, you know, what was going on. <laughs> and, and of course... I'm, I'm not, you know, making that up. I'm not saying like, you know, that was the reason why I traded like shit today. Obviously, it's easy to do that. You can easily, it's very easy to come up with reasons and say, you know, I traded like shit today because I was tired or because of this. It had to be because of this or because of that. Well, in reality, it probably was a combination of things, right? It was probably, you know, um, I did not wake up very energized. And also, I was a little bit unlucky. And the spot that I looked to trade, well, I just happened to get run over. So you can't really necessarily pinpoint exactly what the cause of my bad trading was, but what I could see is that in my statistics is that it's very, very rare that I get into trades and I don't even have one tick on side in the trade. So that already tells me that I was like below my standard performance today by a long shot. So then I can start to look at other you know, things that are associated with um, how I approach the market today. Well, the first thing, of course, that stared me in the face is that I, you know, didn't feel very energized. I felt very tired. My strategy requires me to do a few things. And um, after today, I, you know, realized that I need to kind of make a few adjustments to my overall trading plan. Not adjustments, but um, just kind of put some certain rules in the rule book, you know, update the rule book is what I mean. Okay. And um, I'll read you now a paragraph that I wrote on my phone. And... Um, so it talks about updating your trading rule book here. So the discipline required in trading is like nothing else. Many other things you do in your life can greatly skew your view on discipline. Now, I wrote an example here, but not everybody will, will be able to relate to it. But imagine, you know, a job you do or something in, in your life that gives you passive income. Or maybe it's some opportunity that you got that gives you passive income. And you're just thinking about this in the back of your, of your head while you're trading. Of course, that's going to skew your discipline. If you're not clear about the discipline required in your trading, as opposed to other things you do for income, well, you're going to make some mistakes. And um, definitely it's important to, to kind of sort things out and really have plans and really understand that trading is a totally separate business from every other thing that you do in your entire life. Okay, so we'll continue here. Letting things like that get to my head greatly messes with my overall confidence and discipline. YouTube and trading are two completely separate businesses and must be treated completely separately. I've come to the realization that a better decision for my mental health would be to clear my head in this regard. YouTube is what pays the bills. Therefore, YouTube needs to take precedence over trading. It's just logical. Trading is second to YouTube. However, when I do trading, I need to do everything required to trade at the best of my abilities and be the best trader that I can be when I'm trading. Now I added a note here saying there is nothing wrong with having trading second next to YouTube because plenty of people have a full-time job or a part-time job and trade on the side for only one to two hours a day. And it just so happens that, you know, one to three hours a day happens to be when the market is the most active anyways. And of course there's exceptions to this. Um, but generally speaking, there's activity in the mornings. Okay. Let's continue now on to the discipline aspect regarding trading. Today, early morning, I traded and I was tired. I was half asleep. I still decided to trade as if I thought I could do myself no wrong, right? This definitely sounds like a bit of overconfidence. So maybe I was overconfident or let something get to my head. And I'll describe to you a bit about what I was thinking about. I had many thoughts going through my mind this morning. Boom. That's number one. Some of them positive, some of them negative. But overall, there was just a lot going on. This is never helpful for trading and keeping focused on one important task. So, you know, it requires, you know, honesty and just say, you know, you cannot trade if you cannot literally focus on the inside bid and offer of two markets at the same time, correlated markets, five year and 10 year treasuries. If I'm not able to focus and see what's going on and I keep drifting my head over and I'm not focused, well, you're not going to trade well. Okay, so I need to implement this into my trading rule book about, you know, being much more aware of my overall you know, ability to focus and how tired I am in the mornings. I'm often very tired in the mornings. Um, so I'm trying to improve this and definitely relating to the lifestyle aspect. You know, it's always funny that, you know, we talk about trading, different ways that we can trade. A lot of times the, the bad, you know, the bad side of trading or the, um, as Jared Tendler would call it, the back end of your inchworm, <laughs> funny concept, but um, the back end of your inchworm struggles 
when other things are interrupting your overall process, in this case, your lifestyle, or things you're kind of interrupting into your process, like lack of good sleep. Okay, so it is easy to undermine and forget how much discipline is actually required to trade successfully. Here are some ways this can happen. Since most individuals trade from home, there's no difference between the place they sleep, take a crap, and the place that they trade. This makes it harder for them to get into the discipline mindset required for trading. So there's one trade. I just sold it at 22 and a quarter. Basically, I did not have any supporting factors on this trade. And we're going to talk a little bit about supporting factors as I keep going here. So scalping trading is a high level performance activity and risk activity. It requires superb focus, focus that I did not have this morning, January 24th, 2022. I still trade it anyways, however, that's a lack of discipline. Now we'll talk a bit, little bit about my trading method and my method requires a few things. So for me, the best trading executions come from having fast reaction time. Anyone who's a scalper will know what I mean. If I react to a trade slowly or realize a trade after it's already been there, then it's most probably too late and it's a trap. Okay, all you scalper guys out there know what I mean. Second thing, my strategy requires me to watch the inside market on at least two markets at the same time, correlated. If I find myself not being able to focus on reading both markets or I'm having a hard time, I can try this next step. Admitting to myself that I'm tired and start vocalizing the live auction will help me improve my focus until I can start seeing what's going on without having to vocalize it. By vocalizing, I simply mean, you know, okay, we're at 2275 here, we're at 19 and a half on the 10 year, okay, we traded about 2300 at 19 halves, we're trading about 500 on the offer here at 75. Now, how are we going here? What's what, how we've been trading, you know, and I'm kind of vocalizing the live auction and kind of outlining the overall context of the whole thing. When you talk out loud, you are able to kind of solidify things a little bit more. And I think this is a good exercise. You guys should try it. Try it. Try vocalizing the live auction. And you're going to get better at it as time goes on. You know, you obviously you're going to stumble your words here and there. And if you're not used to like talking or anything, um, it's going to be hard. But um, try it out. Try it. Try vocalizing the auction um, and the trading activity of your marketplace, basically. And also your thought process behind what you're seeing. Um, vocalize it out loud. Try it out. Okay. So if I can't focus, I must stop and come back when I feel more alert. This is, you know, easier said than done. This might even require me to change something in my sleep pattern that is contributing to my lack of focus during trading hours. So I've always battled with this, which is kind of just being tired in the morning. It's very hard, you know, like I can stay up late, work on videos or, you know, have a jam session the previous night or anything that's kind of interrupting, you know, basically getting up early to trade is like very hard. For me, it's always been very hard. Um, and I've tried to keep the discipline, but it's it's never something that really became like second nature waking up super early. And especially since I started trading bonds, you know, you definitely need to be up early and alert and just feel alert when you're trading. And I think the snooze button thing has a, a big effect there. So I'm going to try that out and uh, see what happens. The third thing I'm going to just talk about briefly here in regards to my trading is supporting factors in your trade. So you can call them multiple factors of confluence. So what I wrote here is supporting factors in my trade and exiting immediately if things are failing. And again, going back to the fast reaction time thing. So supporting factors could be something like correlations, right? So if you're looking at a certain area of context in one market that's tipping off, you know, what's going on in the others, and or if you see that one market's leading the others and you're kind of following what's going on. And if you know that if one market breaks and holds is holding above a certain area of context, there's a higher chance the others are going to keep bidding up a few ticks. You know, little things like that can that help you kind of to tip off to the overall context of what's going on. You can call it context. You can call it multiple factors of confluence in your trade, right? So you can say uh, in this in this trade, for example, there was one trade here where the tenure needed to stay bid at 19 halves uh, in order for a breakout to trade to work in this scenario. And we were kind of like in this little trading range and it needed to be staying bid at halves and, and uh, 20s needed to also go. And I was basically looking to buy this here at 23 and a quarter. And uh, this would have been also the upper end of a range in the five-year treasury. And we had already kind of tipped back into the range a couple of times. So I thought the, the, the buy here was a decent setup. In fact, 
it was a pretty decent setup. The only thing is the one factor of confluence I had here, which was the 10 year also bidding above 19 halves and, you know, starting to trade 20 offers and, and hold bid and 19 halves that did not follow through, which made the breakout trade basically invalidated in that moment. So of course, probably my lack of overall focus contributed to the fact that I took a semi good trade. Um, and that's fine. It's it's really not the end of the world. Um, what I really wanted to kind of focus on in this particular video was really just talk about the sleep pattern thing and, um, you know, making fine adjustments to your trading rule book. All right, guys. So I hope this helps some people out there and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.